Anime live adaptations are usually a mixed bag, so it's not every single day that I get a win-win come across the desk where it could go either way. Animations usually go one or two ways when transformed into live action, they become relatively okay and it's a win in the books of they did a good job, or it goes the other way, where it's a win, where it's laughably bad, but it's watchable because it's bad. There's been a lot of bad anime Netflix adaptations lately, and there has been a lot of memes going around about like the anime, the Netflix adaptation, and it's just the most garbage image in the world. So when One Piece got announced to be worked on, the hype and speculation around it was crazy. Everyone really had a negative attitude towards it, especially when you had things like Avatar The Last Airbender come out and that movie was fantastic. So it's fair to say the community speculating that the show is going to be trash is pretty warranted. However, when the trailer came out, everyone kind of like ate their own words and realized, oh, this had potential to be really good. I had the pleasure of working an overnight shift at work when that show came out. So I had the chance to watch every single episode and I just finished it this morning. So let's go through what I thought about the One Piece Netflix adaptation delight. All right, let's quickly talk about all the stuff I really liked about the show. Uh, I'm going to actually go into spoiler territory here a little bit. Not, not nothing crazy, but I mean, it's a very old anime. So the stuff that I really liked about the show um, and what I thought were pretty good is the animation, especially the special effects when it came to the water and water scenes. I really liked that one shot of the fishmen swimming underwater. All the water crashes and especially the sea beast and i think the first or second episode uh i was it really floored me one of the things that really doesn't hit when it comes to live action is a lot of the special effects no pretty good luffy's rubber abilities for the most part were really really good there was only one that kind of you know you could really see cg when you can see cg and that's when he blew himself up like a balloon to bounce back the cannonball that was the only one that really stuck out um, as pretty bad special effects, but the rest of it was really, really good. And I can't praise the animation department enough. Usually the animation department are in there like sweatshop workers having to work 9,000 hours um, a day just to make sure a product comes out decently good. And look, if they were put under the pump, they've released a pretty decent product. I really did like all the water scenes. Most of them would be CG. I don't think we're going to have all these actors out there actually on boats. They did a fantastic job there. I also really liked how whenever anyone notable came on like on screen, they showed the bounty come up and they all had individual animations on how they like cut them, picked them up, ripped them up. It was a pretty good way of like introducing the fact, oh, okay, this is a big player in the show. We need to pay attention to them or something like that. I don't know. It was pretty sick. I actually enjoyed that. That's actually brand new. Oh, just the show put that in. Fuck, actually sick. The acting and the vibes of all the main cast were immaculate. I really enjoyed watching the actors completely take the vibe of the characters from the animation, uh, from the anime, and bring it in. And they really started to live their own characters. Some of the accents threw me off a little bit at the start, especially Luffy's accent. I'm so used to hearing him in a certain way when I was watching the show. Uh, and to hear him with a different accent kind of threw me a loop. However, in saying that, it took about one episode, maybe one and a half episodes to get used to the accent of the main lead um actor of luffy but i can tell you one thing he really uh did a fantastic job I, I liked hearing and seeing and catching up with the marines especially kobe and his new friendship and that insufferable son of the axe man i forget what his name is but that story unroll like unveiling itself and how kobe comes into a strong character on the side was actually a really good watch it was a good breakup from just watching Luffy and his people doing this stuff. Also, something that I noticed is everyone's pupils in the show were extremely dilated. Their, their pupils were huge. The adaptation of the story from the anime to the show is way more streamlined, as you would imagine. Uh, they cut out a whole bunch of filler stuff, but I think it was pretty warranted. They did a good job for the most part. A couple of the stuff seemed a little bit rushed, and I didn't like how some of it played out. And I guess I can just talk about that now. And to start, um, I would like to talk about uh, when Luffy met Zoro. I think the the thing that was make Zoro like Luffy just wasn't there. I don't know where they got this really strong connection and bond. Zoro from the anime was really tethered to Luffy because of his act of kindness and his way of showing well love to the people in his town, like in that town. But I didn't really see any of that in the Netflix adaptation. It wasn't bad. It just didn't make sense that they were so intertwined right at the start. If we can move on further onto the next uh, part of the show, it was the fight scene with the butler at Usopp's at the, the at the Usopp's island, and the butler being a notorious pirate was something that I really resonated with. I thought that was a pretty good twist, and the huge fight with all his crew coming to raid the town was super interesting. So the battle on the shore, stopping them going to the town to basically murder everyone, was like a pretty good point, plot point, and. 
I feel like having it set inside the mansion really took away from the stakes of the situation because all the threat and the danger is just encapsulated inside the house and instead of kind of like taking over the town and killing the the ship baroness i forget her name um they just basically had it in the mansion instead i did like the the clown pirates and how they like kept him in through the story throughout the whole thing because he's pretty interesting when the buggy buggy comes in later he's super interesting so i liked how he ended up showing up um multiple times throughout the show and especially his animations were, were pretty sick uh last thing that i didn't really like was uh the arlong park ending basically mainly the fight with arlong kind of seems like it just came to a story conclusion and he just took a whole bunch of beatings from luffy he didn't really get to show off any of his moves where he does that weird dive thing with his nose also luffy never broke his nose which was one of the things that i'm like okay gg he broke his nose but he kind of fixed it but look honestly I th it really comes down to the fact that i maybe wanted to make room for the garb ending and uh wrapping it up pretty quick costumes looked a little bit goofy especially the fishman the fishman looked incredibly goofy uh didn't take away from the show too much it just makes you know that they're in makeup and especially captain uh nezumi with the guy with the whiskers and the ears looked pretty funny look in a genre that is usually saturated in dung complete crap takes and really lawfully bad shows uh, Nef this this netflix adaptation live adaptation actually takes the cake it does a pretty good job man it stands out as one of the ones that did their job and did it well they've changed one piece a one billion show a one billion episode show and they've kind of like boiled down the first set of acts into a very watchable experience and they've done a fantastic job adapting it into the live action wor like world so for that i don't really like netflix adaptations of anime just because anime are usually very over the top expressive explosive shows but i riz at the end of season one looking forward to watching more in season two which is a lot more than i can say for a lot of other netflix adaptations or live movie adaptations if you went in dry and watched this with someone who hasn't watched the anime, I reckon they'll still enjoy it. Pretty good show overall. Um, I wouldn't say it blew any smoke out of the water. And if anyone tells you it's probably the greatest show of all time, they're, they're blowing smoke up your eyes. It's a good show. Very watchable. I enjoyed it. It's not the greatest show of all time, but it's a really, really, really good live action um, adaptation of an anime, which is something we never fucking see. So for that, they get props. I'm going to have to give this one a 7.5 out of 10. Definitely watchable if you like one piece you'll probably rate it way higher if you're a one piece head um but for me someone who's only watched a little bit of one piece enough to understand and have watched all the arcs in the actual anime before watching this good show go watch it if you haven't i enjoyed it 7.5 out of 10